Good morning, everyone. While the pandemic has affected so many of us in the pocketbook specifically, whether you've lost a job, whether you've had to dip into your 401k, or whether you're just paying more money at the grocery store, chances are you are seeing less money that you're taking home. And if you're a parent, navigating financial waters with your children becomes even more difficult. Good thing for us, we are joined this morning by uh, financial literacy expert, Tim Hens Tom Hensky, uh, who's gonna help us suss it all out. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, how are you? I am great, and I know there's so many of us that have a ton of questions uh, about this specific topic because families look and feel very differently across the tri-state area, but I think the message uh, is pretty much universal. I wanna start off first with, what is the overall financial environment that you see families facing uh, as a result of the pandemic? Well, you've heard the statistic by now that probably about less than 40% of households, of American households, were able to cover a surprise $400 expense. And that is absolutely scary to me, as it is to everybody else. I think that the pandemic has undermined our sense of personal safety, and not just from a medical and emotional standpoint, but also the financial stress that's come about. When you talk about safety, that word in particular, um, can cause alarm for some of us, specifically because we're, we're talking about families, we're raising children of all ages and desires. So the number one question is, do we keep this a secret from our children? Say I'm a, say I'm, you know, a single mom and I've just lost my job. What, how do I bring that message to my children? No, you know, I, I don't think that we keep it a secret. I don't think secrets are a good thing in a household. I think you want to have open conversations, and they're tough conversations. I Granted, they are. But I think when you want your kids to bring conversations to you that are tough on their end, uh, I do think, though, you can overshare a little bit. So the information that you do share should be age relevant at their age level. Uh, remember that their perspective can be and often is very different than ours as parents. So you want to make sure that you're tying, tying in their interests. So for example, a really young child might be hearing that you need to cut back and in their mind say, does that mean I need to quit my soccer team? And I don't know that that's necessarily the message that you're trying to get. Right. We're trying to get more groceries on the table. It doesn't necessarily mean you can't play soccer. I, I, I wonder, though, what is the best way to actually start this conversation? I, I've said this before. Being a journalist has afforded me the opportunity to just stick to the facts when it comes to my children. I try to remove the emotion from difficult conversations, but knowing how to start that conversation is difficult. What, what are some of your suggestions? Right, so it's easy to sit here and say, yes, have a conversation, but it's, e it's easier said than done. I think that in this environment, dinnertime conversations are so important, more so than ever we're having family dinners. Uh, and I think that that's a good time to bring it up. But before you do, I think you want to get your act together first. So you need to be able to display to your kids that you understand what the problem is and that you've begun to take action on it. So seek out help from financial advisors or trusted confidants. And then also remember that it doesn't have to be a serious, dire conversation where you could add levity. Uh, I, I know that I used to make fun of my parents back in their day when we were going to school, walking in the snow, uh, talk about things like college and when we ate ramen noodles and give a little bit of a smile and a laugh as you're talking about a serious conversation. I love that, that specifically, make sure you have your act together as a parent. Even if you don't have your act together, fake it because I, uh, to your point, I think the messaging will take on a completely, completely different tone. And when you have that conversation, what are some of the main points that we should be hitting as parents? Well, just like we started this conversation, talking to them about how important savings is and having money for a rainy day. Uh, that if you're going to have to cut back, make sure you tell them that the cutbacks can be temporary, uh, that you will get back to normal. Talk about things like activities that are free. So that could be just going for a bike ride as a family or even playing basketball in the driveway. And then involve them in the process. Maybe create a savings project as a team, as a family, 
uh, that you need to save money to, for wants or needs. Uh, but then also make sure that you're consistent. If you're asking them to cut back, kids are super observant. You want to make sure that you're not going out and spending frivolously yourself when you're asking them to cut back. I love all these useful tips. Tom Hensky, thank you so much. I will be utilizing all of these tonight at the dinner table. Real pleasure meeting you. Yeah.